Hi, uh, I'm Ken Currington. I'm one of the surgical educators here at Camels. And today I'm going to demonstrate for you proper bag valve mask technique. This is important. You may be called upon to do this maneuver during a code or during a resuscitation. So there are specific aspects of it that will allow you to perform it well. First of all, this is a standard Ambu bag. It has a small holster on the top for your fingers and it's easy to squeeze and release. It has a valve that allows air to exhaled air from the patient to be released into the atmosphere rather than remixing with the air in the bag. There's also a reservoir bag here. High flow oxygen can be applied to this nozzle and high concentration oxygen left in the reservoir bag and in the ambu bag and as the flow continues progressively higher FiO2 is, uh, is accomplished in the delivered breaths. So this is not necessary to have the oxygen attached but can in, uh, allow you to increase the inspired FiO2 or the inspired oxygen concentration uh, of your patient in a resuscitation situation. Okay, the mask itself, if you're by yourself, has to be applied properly. The first um, maneuver is to make sure that the mask is oriented properly. A surefire mistake is to have the wide part of the mask over the nose. You'll never be able to a prop accomplish a proper seal. So you can see the mask is teardrop shaped. Make sure the apex or point of the teardrop is right over the bridge of the nose between the eyes. And the bottom aspect of the mask should go right on the chin, not below the chin. Otherwise, you won't be able to seal the mask. This is an air-filled balloon that surrounds the mask. It is compressible. It allows us to seal the mask around the patient's face. If you're by yourself, remember the primary maneuver is posterior pressure of the mask. So I spread my fingers wide, put my interdigital web up against the nozzle of the mask, take my index finger and thumb, push to the left, or directly laterally if I'm using the opposite hand. And then the primary maneuver is to actually push down and seal the mask on the patient's face. Now you may ask, well, why don't you just take your fingers and wrap around? You can certainly do that. The risk is that under a stressful situation in particular, you have a high adrenaline, you're squeezing really hard, you close the patient's mouth off. So my suggestion is... So can you just third once take your... Uh, take the mask off and show them what happens if you push too hard with those uh, distal three fingers. If I have my fingers here and across the mask and I'm close to trying to ventilate the patient and pulling with my fingers, I can, can close the patient's mouth. And then I've essentially closed their airway. Now, if your hand is big enough and or, and or the patient's face is small enough, you may be able to take your fifth finger and sometimes your fourth finger wrap them around the mandible ramus and actually pull forward. That can help seal. But it's a difficult maneuver, particularly if the patient has a large face or if your hand is not very large. So the main maneuver is to actually take that web, get it all the way up against the nozzle and push straight down. And you can see I can easily ventilate using this technique. Just two fingers. Now, common mistakes not putting your fingers all the way to the nozzle and leaving the mask or the pressure of the, on the side of the mask. That will call you, cause you to roll the mask. When you do, you'll have a leak. So you can actually hear the air exiting the left lateral side of the mask versus a correct application in which there's no sound except for the air exiting the valve. Another common mistake is to put your hand too high and roll the mask off the bottom or to put your hand too low and roll your mask off the top. So again, all the way to the nozzle, straight down, perfect seal. If you have a leak, one indication is the sound as we've also indi already indicated. The other is that you can actually feel less recoil from the lungs because air is escaping the system rather than being contained within the system. So the feel of the bag is very important. If you have a very difficult patient to ventilate and you have the joy of an assistant 
or the benefit of an assistant, you can use a two-hand technique. And for that, I take my thumbs and again, put them directly against the nozzle. I make sure that my thenar eminences are on the apex of the mask and my index fingers are on the bottom of the mask and I roll my hands down and I literally wrap the mask around the patient's face and push straight down. You can see I have a fantastic seal. So even in the largest of patients, this will work. If your hands are big enough and you have a patient with sonorous breathing, you can try to, as we indicated before, do a jaw thrust with your fifth and fourth fingers. Very difficult, especially in a big, heavy patient. Okay, one last thing, make sure you use the holster if you're by yourself or if you're in charge of the ventilation. One gentle squeeze, it's not a <laughs> rapid squeeze, it's a gentle squeeze. Allow the bag to fully reinflate. If you do not use the holster and you allow the bag to reinflate, you will progressively lose control of the bag. Your fingers will work their way up, particularly if you're nervous or sweaty, and now you're delivering much less tidal volume and you're having trouble holding on to the bag. So use the holster, that's what it's there for. Okay, that is basic bag valve mask ventilation. Thank you.